people always run to, I don't think I love him anymore. It's that you maybe are not receiving love. You know, the case where the man or the woman, whoever whoever it is, is putting in what they believe to be is love. They're trying to show as much love as they can, but the other person isn't really seeing it. Why is it that my wife didn't give me love? Like what kind of wretched person deprives their spouse of love? I don't want to be with someone who's depriving me of love. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to another episode of Relationship Goals. Relationship Goals is a podcast sponsored by Sunna Match. Sunna Match is our matchmaking service where you can find the right one in the right way. We often talk about, as you can imagine, relationships on this podcast. And it would be a shame if you continue to listen to relationship advice or things about relationships if you don't have one. So, as mentioned before, the link will be in the description. There usually is some sort of discount code, some sort of coupon code somewhere floating around social media, description, maybe in the comments you'll find it um for you know whatever you've got currently going on you could probably find a lifetime if you're in australia there might be a particular influencer around the time as you know it's not coming out now it will come out in a few weeks it might have come out after already yeah yeah um or yeah actually to be honest you might have missed that um the offer but like i said there will always be an offer somewhere floating around you might be able to find it inshallah let's just give an offer in this video for john kicks. shall we give an offer in the video let's call it offer Oh, the offer is offer. Yeah. The offer is offer, inshallah. Go in the, you know what the thing is? We're not even going to tell them what the offer is or, or on what thing it is. You're going to have to go and find it. So go on, As in type in on offer. click on the website and find it. Click on the website and click offer and you'll find out should how we make the, Should we make the offer that from the moment this video is released for two hours, you can get lifetime access for £15. Pound. £15, pound, wow. Which is... That's the same as one month subscription. Yeah, which is an 85 discount yeah wow well, okay yeah fine just two hours. two hours two hours two hours guys go inshallah so without so further pause ado, the video and go meet you go and sign up lifetime so without further ado today we're going to be speaking about <laughs> how to establish we've spoken about love love before by the way like not in detail but in, to some degree you know what it is what it means how people receive it how people give it but today we're going to talk about specifically how to show love through words and actions so uh, we've spoken. So I think I think you did a video previously um, about the five love languages. Yeah. So Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Amma baad. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassili amri wa hlu alqda min lisani yafqahu qauli. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, um, absolutely, Yaki. You know, firstly, it's important to mention before we even talk about how to express love, the importance of love in a relationship. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned He placed between the husband and wife Love and mercy mm -hmm. We talked about love and mercy a lot In the previous episodes um, Love, what is it? Um, there's a kitab I have at home Called Rodatul Muhibbin By Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim It's a book about love It's this fat wow. He actually goes through All the different types of love It I think he goes to about 25 plus different types of love. Wow. As in the way it's given. The, the, as in different categories of love. Mm. He goes to the ones that are permissible, the ones that are not permissible. Does that make sense? That's very important, yeah. He goes to... Well, like, that book is amazing. Mm. Yeah, It's literally a fat book on love. How to love. What is love? Love that's correct. Love that's not correct. Love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love that's, that can lead to shirk. It is profound okay mm. he even talks about that which brings about love whatever have you so this is not going to be like a ibn al-qayyim uh scholastic kind of definition mm -hmm. of what love is um to be something i'm going to try and seek to define love here yeah but the point is you know you know some things you don't need to define you know like uh the arabs they uh or rather the scholars they they define things you know jam it man it they make the definition uh, encompassing and eliminating mm -hmm. so that it's like a proper correct definition but some things you will really struggle to define because of how in your face they are mm. like for example scholars they attempted to define ilm what is ilm mm -hmm. and even though they gave defin for, definitions for it but like knowledge is knowledge mm -hmm. like they say you know you want to define water al ma who al ma mm -hmm. water is water you can't really mm -hmm. define mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. love is love like we all know what love is it's that yeah I'll describe it more by its effect it's that thing that you know makes you happy it's that thing that gives you you know Butterflies in your stomach to, uh, to some extent It keeps you warm It makes you fuzzy it keeps, you, it keeps you warm and fuzzy inside Or whatever have you Okay But what's important to mention here With regards to, not, Without going too deep Into the philosophical definition Of what love is Is that love is a human need mm. It's a human need okay. It's a human need That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Acknowledged And by mentioning it in the ayah 
it indicates that it's a central part of married life. It's a central part of a successful married life is that you communicate love. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Uh, and and love is kind of like the petrol or the gas or the battery that runs the relationship. You see, when your phone starts to go short on battery life, your phone will not function as well as it does anymore. And even the iPhones, when it gets down to 2-1% when the, when the battery is low, it starts to crash and yeah, move slow. Starts glitching a bit, yeah. Starts glitching a bit. So relationships are like that. Your relationship will start to glitch when when your love battery starts to decrease or when your love tank starts to feel run a bit out, yeah. empty or mm. f run out. So what you have to kind of understand is that, you know, if you are compatible with your wife and your wife is compatible with you and you, you know you are attracted to each other, but there is an absence of, like, like there are problems in the house and there is arguments in the house and there's unhappiness in the house. It's not that you don't love each other. People always run to, I don't think I love him anymore. Mm -hmm. It's that you maybe are not receiving love. Mm -hmm. It's a difference here now. Mm -hmm. I don't love you means I'm not attracted to you anymore, which mm -hmm. means I don't have the potential to love you. I don't have the capacity to love you anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to say, mm -hmm. I don't love you like anymore. Like I've fallen out of love. Yeah, I've fallen yeah. out of love. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I don't love you anymore. I desire mm -hmm. other than you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people... Like I said, a lot of it comes down to not knowing the human self. You know what I'm saying? So they they perceive it and they interpret it as marriage is over. Mm -hmm. Let's get a divorce. Mm -hmm. But actually, a lot of the time, it's got nothing to do with falling out of love or not being attracted and not having the capacity to love this person anymore. It's just that you've been running on an empty love tank mm. for a long time. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's that you have... And the effects are taking toll now. Ex yeah. Exactly. So it's not that you don't love, it's that you're not being loved. Mm. There's a difference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not that you don't love and that you cannot love, it's that what you are... Not receiving. You're not receiving love. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Now, al faqidu shay la yu'ti. Scholars say the one who's empty cannot give. Cannot yeah. give. So then when you're not receiving love, Automatically now you find it hard to give give yeah, love, course, yeah. which means your partner also feels unloved, unloved, unloved. and yeah. because they feel unloved, they they're perpetuating a lack they're perpetuating of love. the lack of love back to you. Wow, yeah. And now you have two couples that are attracted to each other that do have the capacity and the potential to be in love, mm -hmm. but they are running on low love tanks. Mm -hmm. Their love battery. The love is economy is low. getting dry. Yeah. yeah, the love economy wow. is getting dry. Does that make sense? So <laughs> the problem with this now is that if someone... There's two problems here. The first problem is you don't even know the problem. So when you don't know the problem, you're going to try and bring solutions that are not relevant. And yeah. that's where a lot of the time divorce comes onto the table. Okay. And couples will get divorced and you really didn't need to. Mm. You, could, you could have actually made it work. Does that make sense? The second thing is that when you're in a situation where both parties are feeling unloved, one needs to give and say, you know what? I'm going to take the L. And despite me being very needy of this love right now and not receiving it, and despite my love tank being so low, I'm going to use whatever's left inside of me. And I'll tell you what it's like. You know how nowadays you have these cars that are battery powered mm -hmm. and then they're what? they got an engine as well. they got an engine as well. Mm. So they use the engine. Mm. They use the engine. And then, uh, you know, then when, when when the petrol runs out, then the battery kicks, kicks in. in yeah. Does that make sense? So you have to understand, so, you have like as well, you have like mm -hmm. a love engine, but you also have a backup. Mm -hmm. That's called mercy. Mm -hmm. That's coming back to the verse, the love yeah. and mercy. Yeah, yeah that's I mean. You have an engine, mm -hmm. that's the love engine. Mm -hmm. And then maybe consider the backup power supply as mm -hmm. the battery of mercy. Mm -hmm. Even though I was kind of using both analogies for love earlier, but... This is good, yeah? So you're like a hybrid car. Okay. Does that Great. make sense? It's, yeah. it's, it's beautiful the way Allah has created us. Sorry. So it may be that you are not able to give love from the angle of your love tank being dry. Okay. But you can still give love from the angle of your mercy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Now that mercy is from Iman. As long as you're a believer, as long as you obey Allah, as long as you have Iman, you will have mercy to give. The Prophet Ali Sassam was being shown a huge lack of love from his people, yet he still gave and gave and manifested love to them from mercy. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because of his Iman, he was able to give so much. Does that make sense? And this is beautiful because 
if both of you are just refusing to give, 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 and you're like, oh, I can't do this for you because you don't do this for me, and I can't yeah. do this for you because you don't do this for me, and everyone is looking at himself and everyone's looking at himself, right? Remember the principle we mentioned? Mm-hmm. Upon them is what they do, and upon you is what you do. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, 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 so you've got, there has to be a point where someone says, okay, okay, you know what? Don't worry. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. I will take the L. Yeah. It's beautiful if you both take the L. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's beautiful if you both sit down and you work this out. But let's just say one is not working it out, one is not understanding it. One is you have to tr- become a little bit more selfless. You have to become a little bit more selfless, kick into mercy now, mm-hmm. and give the love mm-hmm. in order for you to receive in the future. As they say, you have to pay it forward in order to be paid back. There you go. Mm-hmm. I like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's the first thing to mention the importance of this. Yeah. Now the point you wanted to talk about was. Like manifestation of love yeah. through through actions and through words. I want people to be able to identify it when it's there. Because as you mentioned previously, usually, well, not usually, but some of the time there might be, you know, the case where the man or the woman, whoever, whoever it is, is putting in what they believe to be is love. They're trying to show as much love as they can, but the other person isn't really seeing it. So They're looking at it a bit funny. So like, that's, 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 that's what leads me on to the next point, which is that, that it's not that your husband most likely was not showing you love, my sister. You know, because, you know, we're going back to the topic of, okay, well, how can I even be in a situation for my husband to have not shown me love in the first place? Why did my love tank even ever get dry? Like, what kind of a man stops loving his wife? What kind of a man stops giving love to his wife? And the man is thinking the same. Why, you know, okay, you're, I, I understand my love tank is empty right now. Yeah. And I'm in, you know, mercy battery mode. But why is it that my wife didn't give me love? Like, what kind of wretched person deprives their spouse of love? Yeah. I don't want to be with someone who's depriving me of love. And that brings us to the next point. I don't think they deprived you of love. As you said, mm-hmm. they did communicate it to you, mm-hmm. but they were communicating to a version of love. Yeah. And that version is not a version that sits well with you. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to go a bit into, I want to talk about the Prophet Sam so, hey, because he's, he's our ultimate guide mm-hmm. in terms of how to be in a relationship or whatever yeah. have you. So there's a kitab that I, I read um, by one kafir, Gary Chapman, as you mentioned, it's called The Five Love Languages. And I would recommend, I would recommend brothers and sisters to read this book, inshallah ta'ala. He is a Christian, so you've got to watch out for his, you know, pastor kind of references and all that kind okay. of nonsense. Hmm. Um, but for what it's worth, the theory that he presents uh, is is quite... Seems to be legit. It's, it's quite good. Yeah. And I, I don't want to use it as a framework for the perfection of a relationship because mm-hmm. we don't have delil for it, but mm-hmm. I would bring you delil from mm-hmm. the Prophet's life, mm-hmm. not to try to fit the Prophet's relationship into his theory, mm-hmm. but to maybe mm-hmm. try to show mm-hmm. how his theory... No, as in those things... On the those, back of the yeah, Prophet's life. The, those things that he mentioned are, are, are like a... not. It's like if you're really down low and everything's flopping, it's a good place to start. And yeah. then after you started, you start to realize, okay, this isn't the whole truth. And then yeah. we get closer to the whole truth. Yeah. And that's actually the Quran. Absolutely. 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 I think. What did you say? Repeat what I'm saying? I said that when you, if you're really low and you don't know where to start, that's a good place to start. And afterwards, you realize this isn't the whole truth. And then we get to the whole truth. And the whole truth is the I Quran mean, the best Sunnah. place to start is the Quran and Sunnah. Okay. I think he was low because he didn't go to the Quran and Sunnah in the first place. I. Okay, sure. We'll do that. Okay. <laughs> I I don't think that's what you meant. Though. I think what you meant is if this is all you have. At yeah, least go that's what I'm saying. Like, if, if, you've got nothing if, else, if you're not going to the Quran and Sunnah, and you yeah. have this at least. Mm-hmm. I understand what you mean, but yeah, he should have gone to the Quran and Sunnah first. Sure. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. That's fine. <laughs> I was agreeing, and then I was like, wait, 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 wait one second, one second. Let me just fetch up a second. So the point I was making was, um, so he mentions that you know the love languages are five. Yeah. Okay, there's physical touch, which is not just always intimate. It's not just always well. No, it is always intimate, but it's not always. Forgive me for using the term sexual. Does that make sense? Yeah. And when we say sexual, it doesn't necessarily. I mean, even that is of degrees. It's not necessarily uh, the grand finale. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Physical touch doesn't just mean. Oh, if my if you're if if a person's spouse their love language is, is physical touch, it doesn't mean that they will only receive love every time. You guys do the deed. Does that make sense? No, it's it's all of it basically. As in, it's from the the touch of the elbow to holding of the hands to the cuddling in bed or on the sofa, placing your head on the other's shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's pretty cute. But yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Kissing and yeah. you know what I'm saying, and also that which comes with it, the foreplay, and of course mm. a healthy, intimate relationship. Okay. Um. So that's the first physical touch. The second one is acts of service. 
to serve the person, mm. to do the dishes, to mm. clean the clothes, to take out the trash, to uh, book the know, dentist appointment, to book the dentist appointment. You know, to yeah. to do all those kind of things. Yeah, to serve them, to mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying, make them some food, make them some breakfast. Does that make sense? Uh, thirdly, it is uh, giving gifts. You know, and gifts uh, differ. Uh, for men, yeah, men like to be given a a big gift in smaller frequencies, whereas women like to be given smaller gifts in regular frequencies. Mm. So a man, uh, you know, if you bring him a Kinder Bueno every week, every month, he's gonna appreciate, but he's not gonna, he's not gonna, he's not gonna satisfy his his desire for love. Okay. Although you should, but I'm saying it is there. It's part of it. But if you want to really satisfy his desire for love, if he if if he understands love through gifts, then maybe three four months, maybe save up and you know get him a a nice you know you know something expensive basically. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a man it will mean more to a man if you saved up for a year to buy him maybe a watch at the end of the year, as opposed to every month you buy in him a twelfth. Uh, something which is the value of a twelfth of that watch. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. It will mean more to him that you give him at the end of the one year that one watch than if you every month give him. But that doesn't mean you can't give him gifts throughout the rest of the month. Uh, the rest I was of gonna the say, year. why why do you think that this thing about um men and women receiving gifts differently? Well, I don't know, delete from the Kitab and Sunnah, this is just what psychologists say, and I personally feel like it is consistent with like even me, like for example, if someone was to give me a gift. I'll give an example. I had some students, right, that gave me, uh, and I didn't ask for this, and I don't even know how they knew. And I think I must have just been inquiring on my Instagram one time about what the best smart home devices, Google, Amazon, Alexa, or I think it was those two. So like a month, two months went by, and suddenly I get sent a gift from some of the students that I teach on my weekend class. Mm -hmm. At the time it was weekday, but now it's a weekend class. And they sent me like a, a Google uh, home pod thing because mm -hmm. I wanted something to play Quran and play lectures in my house. Mm -hmm. And boy, it meant the world to me. Until today, I'm feeling... Feeling the love. I'm feeling the love. Yeah, that's all. And that happened like three months ago. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. an 80 pound gift, mm -hmm. which is like more than a kinder bueno. Mm -hmm. But like, bro, I'm I'm feeling it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so men are like that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like enough. I think... I think um, yeah, men are like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Men are like that. Even, even, even my wife she got me a like a like a some this perfume that I like this oud perfume, um, and it was an expensive one. You know what I'm saying, and that um, it means you know what I'm saying. But someone might give you something. It's not to say you don't appreciate. Mm -hmm. No, you you must appreciate. The of course, idea. absolutely. There's no doubt. But about it's just that, that it won't satisfy your need for love. Mm -hmm. The same way. The same way. A woman may give her husband hugs and kisses, but she doesn't give him intimacy. She mm -hmm. doesn't give him intercourse. Mm -hmm. She can't now say, "Hey, I mean, I give you hugs and kisses." You're not. No, he's mm -hmm. grateful, mm -hmm. but then that doesn't satisfy. That, that has to lead on to mm -hmm. that which is a natural progression. Do you see where I'm coming mm -hmm. from? Anyway, the point is, but women, although they also, they they, they women are different. Okay. They need the smaller gifts. They need okay. the regular flowers. Okay. You bring so, a man of flowers, but I'll be honest, he's not gonna understand it. Uh, yeah, he's not gonna get it. Till today, I don't get it. But women love it. Like I've clocked. I don't understand the whole flowers science, but sign about it works. It makes their day. It really does. Yeah. Whether you give it, it to cool. your wife, you give it to your mum, your aunt. Bro, I'm telling you, sign about flowers. Mm. There's something in sign about mm. <laughs> flowers and women. <laughs> there's something about flowers and women. And yeah. Timeless women. combinations. Yeah, yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. But there's something there. The, the point is that they need that regular kind of gift. You can't make her wait once a year for a handbag. You can't make her wait once a year for, you know what I'm saying, like something like that. But you got to give her a regular inter intervals. Mm -hmm. Now, pay attention. Now, also like the man, you got to give him a regular gifts, but if you don't give him the big thing at the end, so uh, it's going to make him feel like what? Unfulfilled. Unfulfilled, right? The woman, you give her, you can give her big gifts. You can give her a handbag. You know, men, men, men. You know, men usually will do that. They'll bring their wives, like expensive handbags, uh, a, a ring, a bracelet, a necklace, mm. and then they won't bring her something for six, seven, eight months. Yeah. Why and is he doing mind, that? It's like, yo, I'm. I got you this gift a second ago. I got that gift a couple months ago. So, 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 you like, know what I'm saying? And but why yeah. is he doing that? It's because that's what that's he wants. He, wants yeah. he, he, a mm. man will show love in the way that he receives. Yeah, you of see? Course, yeah. But she needed it regular over, over regular intervals. Yeah. So you got to give. 
her they get big gifts, but you mm. gotta give it to her regularly as well. You will give guy the big gifts, but you also give it, give it to him regularly as well. But just mm. know which one means more for the mm -hmm. for the opposite, yeah? Gender. Okay, come. So we've gone through what? Physical touch, we've gone through acts of gifts. service. Yep. We've, we've yeah. gone through giving gifts. Mm -hmm. Now there's quality time. Mm -hmm. As you spend time with your spouse, actually sit there and spend time with them, talk to them, just attention focus does that make sense and this has become very hard um and i feel a lot of sadness for couples who or or, or couples or members of a couple <laughs> who have this as their primary love language because of social media and tv and the amount of distractions that are now present in our houses they almost will never get quality time if that's their love language they will almost never get it you know what i'm saying so you have to really understand if that you know if quality time I'm telling you, I'm a person who struggles with this big time. You know what I'm saying? I'm always like my phone is the biggest distraction and it's created a lot of uh discomfort in my house. So that, what I started to do was when I enter the house, I literally leave the phone by the door. Mm. That's what I start to do. I leave the That's phone nice. by the door. And um no, because my parents, um, they call me and they can call me at any time. Of course, I've got a separate phone just for them. No, and that's the phone that I have in the house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Recently, I've kind of been, you know, I've been using the phone a bit more in the house. I haven't been leaving it by the door, but I've also become accustomed to not letting it distract me as much in the house. So I will kind of maybe just leave it in my library or whatever because I've been using it a bit more in the house because of lockdown. So I'm kind of with the phone in the house. But that's something that's like literally, I'm in order to break that pattern that I had for years of constantly my phone distracting me, I'd have to walk into the house. Literally, I'd walk into the house and I just dash it. Mm -hmm. I, literally, I literally just leave it there And I just walk forward And it's hard at first You feel like oh, I can't pipe with my phone Just keep going mm -hmm. and Then I, You know you do that day after day it Kind of breaks the habit So quality time basically Quality time could be dates Could be holidays It could be Just that conversation That you need to have every mm -hmm. night Even mm -hmm. if it's for Half an hour 15 mm -hmm. minutes mm -hmm. Busy schedule Just talk to your wife How was your day today mm -hmm. Again Me as a guy And some guys need this by the way So I shouldn't say me as a guy But me As a person who Doesn't I mean, I don't really want to talk about myself, but I, I, I feel like I clocked over the years. I've decided to rise above love, I think. Okay. <laughs> wow. Transcended love. I've, I said, I said uh, not that I transcended it, but I've, I've, I've risen above the basic human need for love. That, Does that make sense? I, I don't know if that's true, but sure. Okay. I mean, there's a Nisir session that I did, and mm -hmm. this is going to come out after that Nisir session where I talked about the dark side of the world. Mm-hmm. And how the, I know the reality of the world and whatever have you and whatever. You'll know what I'm saying if you watch that. Okay. It was with regards to the brother who lost his grandfather because of coronavirus. And there was a, he, his girl broke his heart. And then his friends are, are breaking his heart because they're not coming to the dean. It was like, it was a very sad pod, uh, episode. Mm. He felt better at the end of it. Alhamdulillah. I was just, no, I, I, it's not, I mean, I, I, I was just, I was just where I was, where I've been for the last few years. So me... Alhamdulillah, I'm 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 kind of different, but in the sense where the point I'm making is, yeah, the world may be a bit tough, I think, but the point is that you see the issue of uh, you know, so 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 yeah, it's not it's not good for me to say I will not understand this because I'm just genuinely I don't think I'm going to understand it anyway. But most people, for them, they just need a 15 minute, and you may not be able to concede how 15 minutes would do their make their day. You may not be able to conceive how just saying, hey, how is your day today, or how is your day? That just sounds so robotic, so. You know what I'm saying? But if you look at her or you look at him and that's their love language and you say to them, mm -hmm. hey, how's your day today? And you look at them and you don't do it like, yo, how's your day today? Or you don't do it whilst you're walking around. No, you, you say, how's your day today, boss? Mm -hmm. I know it means a lot to you because quality slow, time's a love language. Slow, slow day, but nonetheless, go on. Huh? Sure. I mean, uh, quality so. time's a love language. I don't know. I'm Wait, when I said it to you, I saw your eyes. No, not even. I was just, I was like, sure. You no, know. you were connecting to me. I mean, I'm, I'm there in the moment, and I'm. Pre I've learned to be more present than I, I have. I've been in the past. Bro, I'm here now, innit? It, guys, it touched him. <laughs> I, I, just trust me. You know, you know this love language thing. When you get someone's love language, or like, mm. it's like a button you click. Yeah. It touched you, bro. It's a bit evil I looked as well, in the eye. I touched sure. your hand. I touched your hand. I looked mm -hmm. you in the eye. Mm -hmm. I said, "Abbas, how's it today? How's it today? Hasn't really started yet, but." <laughs> <laughs> so the, the point I'm making is that quality time Presence of body, presence of mind, mind. Okay yeah. Then the, the thing is that one's That's really difficult isn't it Just uh, from the angle of There's always things you got to do man 
always 24 7 but that's, that that's why you got a plan a i think the plan plans if you don't plan you plan to fail um what, what i was gonna say is i think that a lot of people would benefit i know this sounds crazy and it sounds really um it sounds like forced bureaucracy like you're just forcing it but i think a lot of people would benefit from like a weekly um meeting for your marriage i'm not gonna call oh, it a I marriage meeting no, but bro, bro. a meeting for your marriage no, bro, i think that's sick yeah like, I, I think that, that as needs in, like, to you sit down and you talk about how you're feeling how this last week went you guys just stand up together you stand bro, up I actually you talk know, about I know it. Brother, she stands up she talks about I, it i, I actually know a brother who used know. to do that yeah he used to have every saturday as the day for his wife mm. he'd say whatever complaints any everything that you have I'm not going to listen to her the whole week Hold it in and let's hear it But on this Saturday. one day At this time you, you open Dave, up You let loose Let's hear it Yeah He'd give, And then all week She'd write it down She'd take it out mm. She'd bring it to him On like a Tuesday He'd say hey Saturday's the day mm. darling <laughs> So Saturday should and, you know, and it's healthy because It allows him to Not be nagged throughout the whole week mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because nagging doesn't ever help mm -hmm. Just trust me mm -hmm. Nagging is not the same as reminding. Mm -hmm. Two different mm -hmm. things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, and we will talk about that in another episode, inshallah. But the point is that, you know, she gets to also just, she knows it's not good. She knows also that on Saturday, I'm going to get my justice. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense? Come back to love languages. And then the last one is, um, is words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. Words of affirmation, which is, I love you. Mm -hmm. You need to, through your words, affirm your love for her. Or your love for him. I appreciate you. Some of us will feel grateful and will show gratitude through action. But one who feels love through words, those actions mean nothing to him. Out of gratitude, you washed his clothes. But he's not going to appreciate that as much as thank you. Should he appreciate you washing the clothes? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. But will it suffice his need for thank you? He needs to hear it. Mm. I love you. You're beautiful. You look amazing today. Yeah. I really appreciate our relationship. Affirm through words the lovely things that you could say to this woman. Does that make sense? Or to this man. Mm. Oh, you look beautiful today. Mashallah, you, you, you know, you see your husband's putting the work. Mashallah, I see your arms are getting bigger. You know, you see your wife, you know, exercise. Allah, I'm bad. You turn up, babe. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the food is amazing. Like, even, th like, uh, uh, you know, things that, you know, I love the way you know, your, your skin looks radiant in this light. <laughs> Even if it makes no sense no, to you, just say it. Yeah. I'm saying, I love the, the cute face that you make when you taste something sour. But you might just be talking, just trust me. As in her mind, <laughs> she's just appreciating. Just like, wow. She just appreciates. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She's like, she's like, really? Mm. What what does it mean? Mm. And now you're stuck. Yeah. <laughs> you got some mix on mad face and that. The point I'm making is that these are the five love languages. So it's it's physical touch, mm -hmm. uh, acts of service, mm -hmm. giving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, mm -hmm. physical touch, um, acts of service, giving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation. I'll mention mm -hmm. it one more time so you can write it down if you haven't written it down. It's physical touch, acts of service. Giving gifts, quality time, and words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem in a lot of relationships is, is that we are always giving love in the way that we want to receive it. Mm. And coming back to the question we asked earlier, why is it that our love tanks are dry? Why is it that we haven't received love? Oh, you've received loved. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, who is putting diesel in a petrol tank? Wow. We're going in with the car analogy. I love He's it. He's putting diesel in a I'm gas tank. It. Yeah. It I'm on about it. Yeah. It's that. Mm. So what's going to happen now? Stalling issues. It's that. The car's going to break down. That's the problem. Literally, the road, if your husband's out, primary love language is physical touch, and your primary love language is words of affirmation and you every day tell him i love you honey you're everything to me you mean the most to me i love you i love you I love, but you don't hug him you don't cuss uh, you don't not cuss you don't hug him you don't kiss him you don't touch him you don't engage in intimacy with him you mm. don't uh, you know be intimate with him and 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 obviously take it to the the upper level of you know the close intimacy between husband mm. and wife 
um, if you don't do that with him, he's he he never heard love from you once. Mm. It's literally as if a man speaks Spanish and his wife speaks, you know, Romanian, for example. And in Romanian, <laughs> she's screaming. She's saying, "I love you," and he's just there in Spanish, thinking, you know, you know, this señorita. She does not understand. <laughs> why am I going to refresh the accent? This senorita, mm, mm. she don't understand what I'm on. Mm. That makes sense. Like he's screaming to her. Like let's just say Urdu. Okay, great. She's, she's in Romanian screaming. To her, I love you. Yeah. I, I don't know how. I don't know how they they would say. Romanian yeah. say I love you. <laughs> but this guy Urdu is thinking, "Yeah, kabi, yeh to koi pyar nikar ti mujhe." Wow. Where's the, you Thanks know what I'm saying? She doesn't love me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Where, where is this? Because they don't. Allah didn't create him to receive love in that way as a primary mm-hmm. mechanism for love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you need to identify what the other's love language is. Mm-hmm. Now there's two mm-hmm. ways to do mm-hmm. it. The first way to do it is just ask yourself, how do you usually give love? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or how does my spouse usually give love? The way that you give and he gives is usually what our primary love languages are. Does that make sense? A guy whose primary love language is physical touch is going to very much like to hold his wife's hand, to hug her, to be intimate with her. Does that make sense? Everyone wants to be intimate, but this just a little bit more. Does that mm-hmm, make sense? Mm-hmm. So everyone, like a guy whose primary love language is receiving gifts, he's just going to always buy her gifts. He's going to mm-hmm. always give her gifts. That's his love language. Like mm-hmm. we established Johnny's love language is giving gifts. That Let's look at his words. You know, even before he had, he could afford to get anyone gifts. He would say, I'm going to buy you a car. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get you this. Oh, I want to get you a Gucci pouch. Oh, don't worry. Mm-hmm. I'm, like he'd always say it. I clock from time Oh this guy's love language Is gifts mm-hmm. So you want to make him happy Just buy him a hat one day mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Buy him a this one day mm-hmm. Buy him a little this You know what I'm saying Every, like, like just acknowledge Through the words that they say Like you, you know what I'm saying or, 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 or what they ask you for Or what they give to you That's their primary love yeah. language And if you're so out of tune With the people that are around you And you really can't work out What your husband or wife's love language is Then there's a test that you can take And we'll link the test below Jimmy Do not forget to link the test do not forget the link says. Please, please, please. I was going to say with regards to gifts, I think it would just be a bit wary um, because the Prophet Sallallahu did say that yeah, to give gifts and it increases love I'm between to, you. So I'm saying uh, that I think everyone has a has a, oh, an avenue for gifts so somewhere or another. It's, just, it's probably just different. Now that's everyone. the second thing that I want to come mm. to is that does the, the, the book argues there's a primary love language and a secondary love language. Mm-hmm. There's a primary love language and a secondary, secondary love language. Okay. So... There's like most people will not have just one primary love language. They have, they have, for example, giving gifts as one, and then maybe like words of affirmation, which is not far behind. Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, but when I looked at the Prophet Ali Sam and I've kind of spent a bit too, more time than I would have wanted to on this introduction, because mm-hmm. really I want to talk about the Prophet Ali Sam and use examples from him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Honestly. when you look at him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he actually gave love in all these ways. Mm. And I'm not limiting the Prophet's love to these five categories. There mm. may be another one. That we're not seeing yet Or we'll come mm-hmm. across Or maybe we can divide I don't want to use his taqsim His mm-hmm. categorization But what I'm saying is What he What, what, what Gary Chapman was arguing I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Do that And perhaps more ab- in, in, in an even more perfect manner Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And then that made me think Hey I mean I mean Because even for example With Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, She's receiving multiple Types it, she, it, it could be that the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam was observant of the way his different wives received love, so then he gave each one. But no, he would give even one wife multiple forms of of love. Mm-hmm. As we're going to come to, he would give Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her gifts. He'd give her quality time. He'd give her acts of service. He'd give her, uh, you know, uh, words of affirmation. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would, 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 would manifest love to one wife in many ways. So then that whole theory of just having one primary love language and not... Ha- and, and not having to focus on anything else doesn't really kind of follow through. It may be that there is one primary and one secondary, but then that doesn't mean that the tertiary and the fourth and fifth one are to also be neglected. And this is also backed up by the test. When you do the test, you'll see that you can see that, for example, your primary love language might be might be might be physical touch, but then it tells you no, you do have a share in gifts and you do have a share in in words of affirmation. It may be little, but it's still there, and that's why it's important. Once you've identified what your what your spouse's primary love language and secondary love language is, and to invest in giving love to them in that primary fashion and that secondary way, to also not neglect the other three, because although they may not have as much of a need for the other three as they do for the first two, there is still a need. Mm. You see, and we saw in the guidance of the Prophet he gave complete love to his wives. He didn't just give a 
I'm going to give them physical touch and, that, and nothing else. He gave them sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a complete love. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So should we go to his guidance? Yes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So which one do you want to do first? Physical touch, acts of service, giving gifts. Which one do you want to do first? What do you think, Jim? Go on. Uh, so which one do you want to start with? Quality time. Quality time. You want quality time? <laughs> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's quality time cannot be matched. That's right. All the while, by the way, I want you to understand when I do mention these things, he was a prophet of Allah. Yeah. Receiving revelation, teaching the people, uh, fighting in battle, mm-hmm. running a government, mm-hmm. judging between people, mm-hmm. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So the reason I'm mentioning that Is Because a lot of people make excuses And say I'm really busy and That's so not actually that, That's oh, true okay. That's an angle But that wasn't mm. the angle I was coming from Okay. The angle I was coming from is I don't want you to think That the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Was just His only goal in life Was just to make his wives happy Okay that's He had true. greater goals than that mm-hmm. And I know that's going to come As a shock to some mm-hmm. But a man's primary goal Should not be To just please his wife mm-hmm. Pleasing his wife Is a part of Life and a part of ibadah, but some guys make this the goal. Mm-hmm. There's a poetry where, they, in, where uh, the way I would say it is that marriage is a part of your life, and one one of the ways to help make it complete is to make sure you guys have a happy relationship. Yeah, exactly. But and do you see how it's a piece of a it's, piece? It's a it's piece not of even, a piece. It's not even close to being the whole exactly. picture. Exactly. Um, no, you're absolutely right. Like you know, like like it's it's a part of your relationship not mm-hmm. not 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 the whole relationship mm-hmm. you know there's a poetry that the scholars they mention about a guy called uh, Jamil okay you know you know and 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 he made, he made, he made this poetry uh he was a he was a i don't know what does a gallus mean just like wow. girls he's just, no but it's not just that it's like he 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 dedicated a lot of time to girls to get women a simp, yeah like a no a simp is like a guy that's like a involuntary celibate guy Oh yeah, everyone gives you different definitions of simp, and I'm not involved. Okay. Okay. He goes. He he says in poetry. He goes. Yaquluna, jahid, ya jamilu bi ghazwatin. He says the people are telling me, oh Jamil, fight. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going for war. The battle's yeah. taking place. Jihad taking place. Go. Yeah. He says jahid, ya jamilu bi ghazwatin. Yeah. He said, wa ayu jihadin ghira hunna uridu. Mm. But what jihad other than women do I want? Every time you speak with them is joy. And every time you get killed in the path of women, you're a shaheed. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to say to live for women, to die for him yeah. is jihad. Yeah, wow. To, he goes to die fi sabil in nisa. Mm-hmm. For me is, is, is shahada. Oh, oh. Does that make sense? Oh, bro. So this like some brothers are like that. Like, is yeah. in, as in the Prophet Sallam. He would give time to his wife. There was bashasha, there was love, there was joy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is time for battle? The person will have thirst on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Mm-hmm. Sallallahu alayhi. Cool. I've got stuff to do now. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the reason I'm saying that is because you've got greater goals in life than just your wife. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean you re- neglect your wife. Yeah. A complete man would achieve those greater goals mm-hmm. while still mm-hmm. maintaining his wife. When I say greater goals, I mean, for example... Your deen and your relationship with Allah and your ibadah and your servitude to Allah. Don't get me wrong, wife is very high up there. Mm-hmm. Right? And I'm saying. So the Prophet Islam's quality time. I'm like, I'm 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 it's gonna be I haven't done an extensive study of this, and nor am I gonna give you multiple examples. I'm just gonna give you a few mm-hmm. to show you the greatness. So you know, if he sallallahu alayhi wa was reaching at these levels, then you can imagine below it, of mm-hmm. course. Mm-hmm. So the Prophet's quality time. Akhi, he was on a battle expedition and he took his whole army and sent them forward so that he could have some quality time with Aisha radiallahu anha mm-hmm. and raise her. Mm-hmm. And he didn't do this once in his life, he did it twice. Mm-hmm. He moved the army forward to raise her. Aisha, she beat him, sallallahu mm-hmm. alayhi wasallam. The second time he did it again later in the future and he beat her. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He beat her mm-hmm. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mm-hmm. And it's so beautiful Even the way he dealt with her Because you know when he beat her mm-hmm. He didn't say Ah I beat you I'm the winner mm-hmm. He said This was For that 
Mm. This was for that. Mm-hmm. Look at how lovely it was. It was in mm. this for that. Mm-hmm. And did he race for a third time? No. Why? In case he beat her again, mm-hmm. it would now not be equal. It would be, he would, I've he got would, a one-up yeah, on you now. Yeah, yeah. Look how lovely that is. That even he just, he was so concerned of her sensitivities. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to think, oh, I've lost. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was just kind of like, you beat me once? Okay, second time I beat you. Mm-hmm. It's not that you're, uh, you know, like, it's, it's, he, he didn't want her to have that feeling of, oh, I've just lost. I'm a loser mm-hmm. now. <laughs> yeah, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Radiya Allah ta'ala anha. Yeah. It was that concept of this for that. Mm-hmm. And even the words, he didn't say, oh, I beat you. Mm-hmm. He said this for that. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I pondered this, it blew my mind. Uh, he just so he could have quality time with his wife, he moved an entire army forward. And mm-hmm. the, not just an army, an army, mm-hmm. which is an army of mujahideen. Fi yeah. azza wa jal. It's an army of people doing jihad mm-hmm. in the path of Allah, mm-hmm. an army of companions. These are hungry, dedicated fighters, bro. And, and not just that, but they're yeah. slaves of Allah. It's a big, it's mm-hmm. a, it's a big mission. They're mm-hmm. going to spread, you know, uh, the, the kalim of Allah is the so it can be mm-hmm. earlier, so it can be high. Mm-hmm. So the speech of Allah, is they, 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 this is a ba- army of la ilaha illa love, tawheed, it's going to spread tawheed. Mm-hmm. Like in the Prophet وسلم, didn't find it, he didn't find it low. Mm-hmm. Or to be a smear mm-hmm. on the greatness of the concept of this army in the path of Allah to say move forward, mm-hmm. go forward, so that I can spend some quality time with my wife. Mm-hmm. Another example of the Prophet ﷺ's quality time was that whenever he would go on his travels, his expeditions, he would always take a wife with him. Mm-hmm. You see, brothers, when they go out and they travel for business, for work, they leave their wives at home. home. And this mm-hmm. is something that me personally, I learned. And I've decided to I think I mentioned this to you guys as well you did, right? yeah Because um, I like to not be a hypocrite And you know what I'm saying When I learn something I try to implement it And I don't want to make it seem like I've always been implementing it But one thing that men do And I've been guilty of this in the past Is, past, is traveling the world Alone Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Especially when you're in da'wah Or when you're in business uh, Seeking knowledge You're going to travel the world a lot um, And you're going to spend a lot of time outside The Prophet Ali Salatu Sam did travel But he would always take a wife with him and he would keep it fair how he would choose every time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he would always take one with him. Um, look at that. Quality time, even in even in a battle expedition. Even going for battle, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is spending quality time with his wife. Can you not spend quality time with your wife after work? For example. So, yeah. so, so just imagine, <coughs> do you think he's neglecting her in the house? If he's not neglecting well, I mean, her in the battle... Yeah. On the march to battle mm-hmm. Not in the actual battle But in the march to battle mm-hmm. When it's a highly stressful situation mm-hmm. You know You go in there just, He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Is not neglecting her there Do you think he's going to neglect her in the house? Definitely Do you think he's going to neglect her in front of her In her presence? No it's not possible. And one of the wisdoms that Some of the people of knowledge They mentioned behind travelling In fact this is a benefit I took from Asad Abdul Rahman Was um, um, You know when you travel You grow You okay. learn mm-hmm. A lot Mm. And it's true Because in my travels I've grown I've learned a lot Like w- Travelling Is such a, a Fundamental Component To my personal growth As a human That You know When you're Having that level of growth And uh, Spiritual uh, Sorry Cultural uh, um, Wholesomeness if you, call, if you want If you can call it that can you call it wholesomeness? Like, as I'm trying to see, like, you're culturally, like, aware. Okay. And and culturally matured. And you've exercised how to deal with different people. And you've seen different things. And there's many tests that come through. Like, there's so much you learn from... Tra- like, you see the world in ways that you don't see if you're just in your block. Does that yes, make sense? absolutely. Now, th- here's the problem. If you travel a lot and your wife doesn't, you grow, but she doesn't. Mm-hmm. Then you wonder why you're not compatible anymore. Yeah. One of the biggest ways to fall out of compatibility with your spouse is to leave her at home while you travel the world. Mm. Bring her with you. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? You'll see it together. Yeah. And th- maybe there's times where she can't or whatever have you mm-hmm. because of difficulty, kids. No problem, but you should try and mm-hmm. even facilitate with the kids. I'm not going to lie. If you've got kids, you should probably travel with them as well. That I d- actually is a huge I, 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 Did, did, huge I, tell you, did I tell you what my plan is? What I'm planning to do? Yeah, you did, yeah. I'm but, not going to tell them. Oh, okay, sure. But sorry. it's a good plan. Sure. Yeah, no, um, I, I think that even if you've got kids, that's probably a, even more of a reason that if you travel, that you take them with you. 
But that's uh, the thing, like, it helps you grow and it helps them grow as well. That that that's the thing. My my uh, father used to, you know, what like as as a child, one of my greatest life lessons that I learned was in Kenya. Come on, bro. I think I told you about that night, right? Who is it? It was just someone was talking. Remember, he was in Dubai. He was talking about no. That was the day you were walking around. It was me, Sammy, Samatan, and Adam. Yeah, yeah, you were just walking around. I'll take steps. I'll take yeah, steps Allah in, bro. It's not just walking around yeah, and saying, I've got steps to get in. Allah and Yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, and just seeing so much in Africa and Asia and mm-hmm. and Arabia. Like, I'm saying, you know, you travel, you mm-hmm. learn. So that's the Prophet Islam's quality time. Okay. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the next love language. Throw at me. Throw at me. Uh, let's say gifts. Gifts. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Actually, do you want to come to this one at the end? I mean, we could just mention it now. Run. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explicitly mentioned, you know, uh, give gifts. Mm-hmm. Give gifts. I think the hadith mentioned tahabu or kamaqal. Give gifts. Why? The Prophet said it increases, increases love. Mm-hmm. Look at that. The Prophet said, give gifts. Mm-hmm. It increases love. And what's an example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam giving a gift? I mean, on the wedding, uh, when Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha came to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she prepared for him on the, on the wedding night. Mm-hmm. What did he do? He brought her the milk. Mm-hmm. He brought her the gift. Mm-hmm. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what's another one? As in another love language? Yeah. Oh, um, uh, physical touch. Physical touch. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, uh, Aisha mentioned that, you know, even when she used to be on her menses, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Would engage in Intimate touch with her mm-hmm. Of course not in, in intercourse mm-hmm. And uh, Staying away from that Which is between her navel And her mm-hmm. And her Knees mm-hmm. As in they put a cloth over that part of her body mm-hmm. And they, they They wouldn't enjoy each other in that region mm-hmm. in, in, He wouldn't um, In that region Whilst she was on her menses But the rest of her body Would engage in touch with her And 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 an intimate, gentle touch as husband and wife do. Does that make sense? Uh, also, uh, there's a narration that mentions um, when Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and I was looking at the uh, the um, those those uh, the 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 habishis that were there and they were engaging in in some activity and she was enjoying by watching. She put her head out and had it hanging on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's shoulder. Mm. Does that make sense? Physical touch mm-hmm, mm-hmm, And it's not Like the point I'm making is It doesn't always have to be It doesn't always have to be sexual mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Uh, even placing their head uh, I think there was a narration When Prophet Islam Placed his head on the lap of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala And her um, uh, Also kiss The Prophet Islam Would kiss his wives Sometimes before going out To pray the salah And this is the You know there's With regards to does The touching of the wife Break the wudu the Shafi'iya are quite strict in that it breaks wudu, uh, just the mere touch of your wife um, or any woman that is from not from your maharim, that is not from your women that are haram for you to marry. Uh, the Hanabila, the Hanbali Mazhab, they say it breaks your wudu if it's with desire. I can the Hanafi Mazhab in this seem to be the correct view. It doesn't break it even with desire uh, as long as it doesn't come with, for example, uh, uh, a release of uh, Medi, which is pre-ejaculatory fluid. Or many, which is actual ejaculation. As long as you can keep your desire in and nothing comes out of your private parts, it won't break your wudu. And the proof of that is the hadith of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi kiss his wives mm-hmm. before he'd go to pray the salah. Beautiful, Allah. Right? Very beautiful. Um, and what also accentuates further the physical touch, it just, how did the Prophet die? Baina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. Baina Haqinati wa daqinati. He died between Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam between her upper part of her chest and the lower uh, upper part of her stomach and the lower part of her stomach. Basically on, on her chest. Mm-hmm. He Sallallahu Alaihi died in her arms. Mm-hmm. He died in her arms. He died on her body, Sallallahu mm-hmm. Alaihi Wasallam. Like look at that physical touch was a part of their relationship. You know, he died Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in her arms. Mm-hmm. If you're a person who deprives their spouse of physical touch. Imagine dying another way. And you know, someone might say, but you know, it, this is really touched me uh, when I came across this hadith that, you know, we hear about Sahaba dying in battle, which mm. is a noble way to die. No yeah. one's undermining that. But you know, one would think it's, 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 uh, you know, 
like a you know, like a, a man who's out there seeking knowledge, giving that or you know, he you, you you know, he has dreams of dying in the path of Allah, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't really think I'm gonna you don't really think of dying hugging your wife or in your wife's arms is like a noble way to die. But that's how the Prophet died. Mm -hmm. And that's not to undermine the going out there in the path of Allah because the Prophet mm -hmm. did that. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he died in his wife's mm -hmm. arms shows there's something quite beautiful and quite amazing about a relationship with a wife. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A good wife, a righteous wife, you're a righteous husband. It, it, it's a huge ibadah. It's a huge act of worship to, to, to be in that way does that make sense so uh even of course intimacy the prophet ali sassam would never deprive his wives of intimacy and he would be intimate with them in fact in one day he sallallahu alayhi wasallam had intimacy with each and every single one of his wives of course he would do a ghusl before going to the next one he would purify himself not to mm -hmm. take from mm -hmm. that to, you know to, he would he would purify himself but as in he would he would even intimately he sallallahu alayhi wa would not deprive his wife so physical touch was a very part um, you know important part of their their relationship but just remember al faida this is a very uh, beautiful virtue that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her had uh, of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dying in her in her arms um uh, ibn attar rahimahullah ta'ala the student the noble student of the great uh, imam and nawi rahimahullah ta'ala and he, who, he was a student of Imam Nawi and also Imam Ibn Dakhik and Al-Eid. He has a sharh on the kitab Umdatul Ahkam. It's called Al-Udda Fi Ahkam Fi Ahkam Al-Umda. It's uh, not a very commonly known about explanation of Umdatul Ahkam. Walakin, uh, after having looked at many different explanations, not extensively, I haven't extensively looked at many different, I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm some, you know, well-researched guy like that, but after, but having different explanations and, you know, Ibn Uthaymi rahmanullah ta'ala's ones and different ones, whatever have you. Um, it's an amazing one to start off with. As a beginner, if you if you study the Shafi'i Madhab, it is not very simple. So you do need a Shaykh to be teaching it to you. We're going off topic. The point is, when it comes to the Hadith, he mentions in the Hadith when the Prophet Ali some died on her, on in her arms, uh, on her on her chest uh, Between her upper part of her, her Stomach and lower part of her stomach um, um, He mentioned 26 Specific things with, To do with Aisha That she had That no other Woman or wife of the Prophet had. Khadija was the best mm -hmm. And the most beloved of the Prophet mm -hmm. But 25-26 Just remember Abil Faida and we ask Allah to hold the account and to destroy and curse those who curse our mother Aisha mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Physical touch, did we do that one justice? Yeah, I think so Should we good. go to another one? Um, also, another thing that could maybe come I don't know if it comes under physical touch mm -hmm. And I don't know if it comes under quality time And that's why I said I don't want to limit the Prophet Islam to mm -hmm. Gary Chapman's Because mm -hmm. he came with things that are like even more I don't even know what category to put this into But I'll Go mention on. it because it might Let's come under physical touch Let's hear it. Or it might come under what? Uh, quality time Or it may be a category of its own that I haven't been able to give a name to mm -hmm. And we should go to the scholars and ask them mm -hmm. Is that there's the famous narration uh, uh, Of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha Which says Kuntu ashrabu wa ana ha'idun so I was drinking whilst I was on my menses, okay? Mm. And then I gave what I was drinking from to the Prophet. Mm. So the Prophet وسلم, took the glass from her or the cup or the vessel she was drinking from and he turned it to the point she drank from and he put his mouth on it. Mm. And then she said, Oh, العرق. She she was she ate some meat of a bone. Okay, mm -hmm. she was on her menses. Okay, uh, ثم وناوله النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then she gave it to the Prophet the bone. She's eating mm -hmm. the flesh of mm -hmm. the bone. She's not giving the bone. Okay, فيدعو فاه على موضعي في the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم took it took his mouth and he placed it on the part of the bone that she was eating from. Mm. Like that's just like. Extra love now mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's like I'm not even touching you mm -hmm. But I'm gonna touch The thing that you touched mm -hmm. I'm gonna place my I'm not even gonna place My lips on you He would do that so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm gonna place my lips On where you place your lips mm -hmm, mm -hmm, oh, That's mm -hmm. love 
Yeah. It's even a narration, and I believe his authenticity is questioned, but we'll mention it anyway. That you know, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he came in one time and he saw Fatima with the siwak, mm-hmm. brushing her teeth with it, mm-hmm. and he recited poetry out of jealousy, mm-hmm. saying to the siwak, you know, I wish I could, like, something like, I wish I could kill you, like you're in the mouth of my wife. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is, I don't even know what category to place. You see what I mean? Like, what yeah. category would you place it in quality time? But it's not. It's something they do during quality time. Would you place it in physical touch? No, I mean, it, it was, it's separate. It's, it's separate, separate. You know what I'm saying? That's why I, it's more sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So go on. Should we go to our next one? Let's talk about acts of service. This is fun. You're going to like this one because it's uh, a couple of days ago. As well. Yeah, I mean, this one's simple. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not even going to go into this much. I'm going to say when the Prophet Sallallahu wife, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, was asked about mm-hmm. the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at home, what was he like at home? Mm-hmm. What was he like with the family? She said, Kana fi khidmati ahlihi. Oh, come on. Mm-hmm. He was in the service of his family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What was he doing at home? Serving his family. Mm-hmm. A man will say, I've been out working all day. Yes, you have. So I don't have, you know, and it's my wife's role to, you know, take care of the house. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. But she experiences love by seeing her husband do something for every now and again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So why does it hurt you so much to one day get up a bit early and make a breakfast? Yeah. Maybe have a day in the week or maybe two days in the week or maybe, 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 maybe on the weekend you make breakfast for her. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe take some chores from her. Mm-hmm. That maybe the one chore or that she really hates, you take that one from her. It will mean the world to her. Mm-hmm. Have just because when we say she's gonna go and maintain the house, doesn't mean that you don't have a role in the house. Does that make sense? And whatever you can give, like just just know that I mean you're gonna you're gonna save money right in uh in buying her a gift if you access if if that's easy for you then then mm-hmm. then what mm-hmm. then what being in service being in service so mm-hmm. then but so so now I tell you what you do instead of the extra hours that you work to save that money to buy her a gift or the extra hours that you work to make that extra money which ultimately you're gonna buy her a gift mm-hmm. that gift doesn't mean as much to her as taking not doing that overtime but coming and just spending that mm-hmm. overtime in the house mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. do you see what I'm saying yeah. Quality time, if that's not really her thing. So instead of maybe spending too much quality time, maybe, you know, because you were going to give that quality time to her anyway, right? Yeah. Just maybe spend that hour, you know, doing the laundry, mm-hmm. buying the clothes. I'm saying, uh, putting the kids to sleep. Just something. Does that make sense? In the service of your family. Yeah. And, well, and I find that truly, truly, truly <laughs> profound. There's a great honor there. In yeah. the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Giving da'wah, teaching mm-hmm. in the masjid, standing the night in prayer, giving mm-hmm. sadaqah. Answering people's questions, judging between people, but then serving his family. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What's the last one? Are we in the last one now? Yeah, we're on um, words of affirmation. So again, uh, without g- going through an exhaustive list, or and I can't even if I wanted to because it's not something that I have the capacity to do to mm-hmm. go through an exhaustive list of mm-hmm. the Sunnah of the Prophet Islam, But I'll mention an example that really shows the extent of his, of his. Love that he communicated through acts of service. Uh, sorry, sorry, through words of affirmation. On occasion, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked, "Ayu nasi, ahabu ilik." And of course, Khadija radiallahu anha is not alive, so that's why she is not the one who he mentioned. So he, he was asked, "Ayu nasi, ahabu ilik." Who from the people is most beloved to you? What did he say? He said Aisha. Mm. The companion asking, and by the way, this is in front of men. Mm-hmm. This is in front of the people. Mm-hmm. This is in front of the public. Like, as in, he wasn't shy to express his love. He wasn't shy to express his words of affirmation mm-hmm. for his wife mm-hmm. before the mass. Yeah. Because if I'm not mistaken, it was Amr ibn As, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu, who was asking this question. Asked this question. Oh, right. And I think he was asking it because he thought he was the most beloved of the Prophet. Mm. And he wanted to hear himself. Mm. So you're expecting him to mention a guy. Mm. And he says, My, My wife. wife. Yeah. So <laughs> he radiallahu ta'ala and he says, Familiar Rijal. Or rather, mm. it was said, Familiar Rijal. Mm. No, what we mean from the men. Mm. So did he say? He said, Abuha. Mm. Her father. Mm-hmm. Who's her father? Abu Bakr. 
He didn't even mention his name. Yeah, he just said her dad. He said her dad. <laughs> yeah. He attributed when he described the love of the sec of the most beloved man to him. Mm. He described him through her. Through her. Mm. Do you understand? Like, that's nice, yeah. That's lovely, I like. Yeah, very nice, you know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> no, that's actually really nice. Of course, if you, yeah. Yeah, as long as mum wasn't alive, mm. your mum's alive, bro. Mm. She, you know what I'm saying? You need to, you know what I'm saying? She, mm-hmm. you, we should be hearing her yeah. name from your mouth first. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You've got parents and whatever have you and uh, give the rights of them. But of course, Prophet Ali saw some, his mother, his father wasn't alive. Um, But your wife better be up there, man. And you better... Show that love, and I'm saying you think when the Prophet Ali Ali, Ali is proclaiming proclaiming his love for his wife in public like that mm-hmm. before men who he fights alongside with in mm-hmm. battle. Mm-hmm. I keep mentioning this because the uh, because the battle because thing is guys like very, think it's soft, isn't it? Yeah, because the, yeah, because the battle is a very is hard thing, manly thing. Yeah, you know course, what I'm saying? Yeah. But he would say, "I, Aisha, mm. the most beloved mm-hmm. of of all of the people on planet Earth to me, mm-hmm. in front of the men, oh Messenger of Allah, <laughs> Abuha." <laughs> Her father <laughs> Yeah Obviously <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah I think that's beautiful yeah, So as we nice. can see The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Went above and beyond His mm. manifestation of love For his For his Wives And And um, You know Like I, I, even, I even I even think there's another level of love That we That Gary Chapman didn't mention That the Prophet Ali Sassam Showed For which was, Allah Which was uh, of course, that's an underline. Mm. That's the mm. underpinning theme of all love, but giving importance to your wife. What do you mean? Like in Hudaybiyah. Yeah. When the Quraysh stopped the Muslims from going forward and then uh, to do Umrah, and then uh, the Prophet Ali Sassam commanded everyone to go back and we we'll do Umrah again, and then he told them shave your heads mm-hmm. because they were in a state of ihram, so they had to mm-hmm. shave their heads to get out of that state of ihram. Yeah. Um, but the companions didn't immediately. Yeah. Do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, because of the pain and agony and the shock mm-hmm. of that situation that they were mm-hmm. in, so the Prophet Ali Sassam came back and he he spoke and consulted Um Salama radiallahu mm-hmm. ta'ala and his wife, and she gave him advice. Mm-hmm. She said, "Oh, Messenger of Allah, you do it first, mm-hmm. and then everyone else will follow. Mm-hmm. Everyone else will follow because mm-hmm. when they see you do it, they're not going to just obey you; like they're going to do it." And it was as mm-hmm. she said, mm-hmm. he sallallahu alaihi went out. His barber shaved his head, or I think mm-hmm. I can't, I think he got some shaved his head. I think he got some shaved, or he did himself. But basically, his head was shaved. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it's straight away everyone started doing it. Mm-hmm. Like, can you imagine, like, given you're in 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 a big political situation? Yeah, I mean, people they would call it a high political military situation. Mm-hmm. He goes and consults his wife, and mm-hmm. he listens to what she says, and yeah. she gives good advice, and yeah. he acts upon it. Mm-hmm. Is that not going to make it feel special? Of course, hundred percent. Do you understand? Know yeah. So, by the way, so all that we've said that the wa- husband should do for the wife, the wife should do back to the husband. Husband, mm. So that's what I have to say on this episode today. Beautiful. It's, I'm annoyed that I spoke so much about the theory at the beginning, and we got mm. to the hadith so late. Mm-hmm. I really hope people watch towards all the, the way end. through. Dorian, um, Jim, uh, Aman will help help us uh, cut you up. Yeah, or maybe we can just us. release the prophets. That section of just the f- maybe we can release that as a separate video. Yeah, I, in fact, can you cut that whole section of when I started talking about the Prophet Islam's showing how he showed love as a separate video? We can upload that as a separate kind of thing, I think, because I really want people to see that. Solid. Okay, with that said, we've got more episodes to do today. As you guys know, the uh, the studio is being shut down and uh, we're moving, but we don't, we still don't know where. So um, I think alongside the Sunna Match link somewhere down below, there's a there's a fundraising link yes or no? uh, I don't put it in relation goals. Is it? No you, 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 There's no people, fundraising there's you, no people fundra- just, you people just come to get married Okay just come Okay inshallah So uh, With that said uh, Inshallah Maybe maybe you can invent Your own love languages I don't know We'll leave it to you To find out I don't out, think they can Because find it's, out Allah, what it is. The way, it's the way Allah No I mean like just, may, Maybe not invent Maybe discover Discover, discover yeah. some new love languages That we haven't mentioned yet So the only way That's going to happen Is if you get into Your own relationship So in the link below Inshallah In the description below rather, There's a link And there. also the test The love language yeah. test if if the brother remembers to put it in. I'm confused now who's Jimmy and who's Johnny and who's this guy and who's the, just the brother. Okay. Okay, we'll leave it there, inshallah. Barakallah fiqh subhanakallah wa bihamdi kashan la ilaha illa anta stafkhuli qawwa tu ilayk. Guys, this right here is a big Mac. Do you have any idea? 
how much McDonald's spends every year on their advertisement. They spend $450 million. You know why? Because this Haram burger is valuable to them. Now on the flip side, when it comes to promoting a DAWA project, how much do you think DAWA organizations budget is? And I'm talking about organizations that don't compromise their da'wah. They keep it 100% Quran, Sunnah without doing anything dodgy. Our budgets are nowhere near close. Now the kuffar don't feel shy to put their money behind what they believe in because they value it. But we know for definite that they don't value their burgers and their haram meat more than we value the book of Allah then why is it that we become so tight-fisted when it comes to spending money on La ilaha illallah? You see, it's embarrassing that you will struggle to find a house on planet Earth that doesn't know about McDonald's and doesn't know about the Big Mac. Yet, there are houses that don't know about La ilaha illallah. That's an embarrassment. For that reason, brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask you, to get involved in an investment that's going to benefit you in your life and the next life. And that is to support our social media data project. You're going to struggle. And this is respectfully a challenge. You will struggle to find a data organization that's got as much output as us. I mean, look at our productivity and look at our reach. We're the closest thing that you're going to get to a mainstream, uncompromised, Fully 100% classical, pure understanding of the deen on social media in the West. If you find someone better than us, if you find someone that's doing it better than us and bigger than us, go support them. It's on you to go support them. But if not, then brothers and sisters, we're doing a job for you. I don't know about you, but I gave my life to this cause. I gave my life to it. Kuffar can put 100% in behind what? Haram food. And we can't do that behind what? the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without any further ado, brothers and sisters, donate at the link below and let's get la ilaha illallah spreading around the world. Peace.